In this video, we'll see the Johnson bound, which states that any code with good distance is decently list decodable. So here's what the Johnson bound says. Let J sub Q of delta be equal to this quantity, 1 minus 1 over Q times 1 minus the square root of 1 minus Q delta divided by Q minus 1. Now, let C, subset of sigma to the n, be a code with alphabet size Q that has relative distance at least delta. Then, the theorem says, if P, our list decoding radius, is less than this quantity J sub Q of delta, then C is list decodable with radius P and list size Q times delta times n squared. So qualitatively, what the Johnson bound is saying is that if a code has good distance, then it has good list decodability. Indeed, we notice that this quantity, which is called the Johnson radius, is increasing in delta. So qualitatively, what this means is that as delta gets bigger, then this radius p, for which we have a decent guarantee on the list size, is also getting bigger. Notice that maybe we might hope for a better list size than n squared. We might hope for constant or something like that. But for us, we're going to call anything polynomial in n a decent list size. OK, so that is qualitatively what the Johnson bound says. Quantitatively, though, it's a little bit hard to parse. This expression looks a bit gross. For the rest of this video, we will try to quantitatively compare the Johnson bound to the list decoding capacity theorem that we saw in the previous video. We're not going to prove the Johnson bound in these videos. There are actually a lot of different proofs of the Johnson bound. You can check out the lecture notes for some pointers to those proofs. But for now, let's focus on understanding what this quantity is and how it compares to what we know already. Let's start with the binary case, that is, when q equals 2. In this situation, the list decoding capacity theorem says this. It says that when the rate is less than 1 minus the binary entropy of p minus some epsilon, then there exists a binary code of rate r that is p, l list decodable. And there's a little asterisk here which says for reasonable l. So in this case, L was big O of 1 over epsilon. But for this quantitative comparison, I really want to focus on the trade-off between P and R. So I'm not going to care too much about the list size. I'm just going to say we'll call the list size reasonable if it's polynomial and everything in sight. And then I'll just put this little asterisk here. Just say list decodable. OK, so that's what the list decoding capacity theorem says for binary codes. The Johnson bound, instantiated for binary codes, says that if P is less than the Johnson radius, which happens to be 1 half times 1 minus the square root of 1 minus 2 delta, when q equals 2, then any binary code of distance delta is p, l list decodable. Again, for some reason, we'll list size l. Unfortunately, it's not directly obvious how to compare these two things. This says that if the rate is small enough, there exists a list decodable code. And this says that if the distance is big enough, then there exists a list decodable code. So in order to compare these, let's turn the Johnson bound here into a statement about rate. One thing we can do is plug in the best statement about rate that we know, namely the gilbert varshamov bound, to get a statement of the form, if the rate is small enough, then there exists a list decodable code. So here, let's plug in the gilbert varshamov bound. So the gilbert varshamov bound says that there exists a code of rate 1 minus the binary entropy of delta. Or in other words, that there exists a code where delta is h2 inverse of 1 minus the rate. Then this says, if p is less than 1 half times 1 minus the square root of 1 minus 2 times this quantity, then there exists a binary code of rate r that is p, l list decodable. for a reasonable list size L. OK, almost there. To make this statement look a little bit more like this statement, let's just solve for R. When we do that, we get the following. If R is less than 1 minus the binary entropy of 2P times 1 minus P, 
then there exists a binary code of rate R that is P, L list decodable for reasonable list sizes. And now these two statements we can directly compare because they're both of the form if the rate isn't too big then there exists a list decodable binary code of that rate. Let's plot these two curves next to each other. When we plot both of these trade-offs together, we get something that looks like this. So here's the trade-off that we get from the list decoding capacity theorem. That's this one minus binary entropy of P. And here's the trade-off that we get from the Johnson bound. That's this one minus binary entropy of two P times one minus P. We see that, as expected, the Johnson bound is worse than the list decoding capacity theorem. It can't be better because the list decoding capacity theorem was both an existence result and an impossibility result. But the Johnson bound does let us take P, the list decoding radius, all the way up to a half and still get positive rate, just like the list decoding capacity theorem did. Moreover, the Johnson bound is in some sense more general because it's not just an existence result. It gives us a hint of how to achieve it. We just need to come up with a code of good distance. Okay, so that's what the situation looks like for Q equals two. How about for larger Q? For larger Q, we can repeat this exercise. So now think of Q as growing, maybe greater than or equal to N. In this parameter regime, one minus the Q or entropy of P is approximately one minus P. And this Johnson radius, which is actually equal to this thing, is approximately one minus the square root of one minus delta. To get that, I basically said, okay, one over Q, that's basically zero, and Q divided by Q minus one, that's basically one. In this setting, the list decoding capacity theorem says that if R is less than one minus P, which is approximately one minus HQ of P when Q is big, then there exists a QRE code of rate R that is P comma L list decodable with reasonable list sizes. On the other hand, the Johnson bound says that if P is less than this approximate Johnson radius thing, one minus the square root of one minus delta, then any QRE code of distance delta is P comma L list decodable with reasonable list sizes. Once again, it's not immediately obvious how to compare these two things because this is in terms of rate and this is in terms of distance, but we can use the Johnson bound to get a statement that is comparable to the list decoding capacity theorem by plugging in a code with good distance. In this case, when Q is large, we don't need to appeal to the gilbert varshamov bound. We actually have codes that have the best possible trade-off between rate and distance when Q is large. Those are Reed-Solomon codes. So let's go ahead and plug in Reed-Solomon codes to the Johnson bound and see what we get. This says that if P is less than one minus the square root of R, remember that for Reed-Solomon codes, one minus delta is equal to R, QRE Reed Solomon codes of rate R are P comma L list decodable with reasonable list sizes. And once again, we can solve for R to get something that's more directly com comparable to the list decoding capacity theorem. In particular, we get that if R is less than the square of one minus P, then there exists a QRE code of rate R or Reed Solomon code that is P comma L list decodable for reasonable list sizes. Once again, we can plot these trade-offs. So here's the list decoding capacity theorem for large Q, it's just a straight line. And here's what the Johnson bound looks like. Once again, we see that the Johnson bound is not as good as the list decoding capacity theorem. However, it does have some good things going for it. So first, it shares the property of the list decoding capacity theorem that it guarantees list decodability all the way up to P equals one minus one over Q, which looks like one on this plot because we think that Q is really, really big. Additionally, the list decoding capacity theorem was non-constructive. We took a completely random code. While for large Q, the codes that live here on the Johnson bound are just our old favorites, Reed Solomon codes. So we have explicit constructions here on the Johnson bound. Next time, we will see how to efficiently list decode Reed Solomon codes up to this point.